Breaking news this morning is that we've learned fearless Friday analyst Mitch Petras has died from heat stroke. Mitch has been part of our Fox 16 Fearless Friday team for several years. Joining us on the phone now is Fox 16 Sports Director Wes Moore. And Wes, let me just ask you, when you heard about this this morning, what was your first reaction? Oh, man, it just, um, it, it makes you sick. I mean, just so sad. This is a guy who, uh, live life to the fullest mm -hmm. and um man, he was such a hard worker uh, there were so many friday nights when he was doing coverage for us you know he'd worked all day and uh, whether he was working on the farm or out uh, on his tow truck um but he, he loved what he was doing with fearless friday and he wasn't going to miss it you know he was going to get there to the game and uh you know i, I just I just, Mitch does everything uh, all the way. And you, you go back to when he played at Carlisle, a hard-nosed football player, and walks on at the University of Arkansas, and he started as, as a fullback and then grew into an offensive lineman. And, I mean, that's a heck of a story, and it just shows that's Mitch. You know, he just he goes at life 100%. Wes, are you on speaker right now? No. Oh, okay. No. You're getting some feedback. Uh, I mean, from what you've seen on Twitter, it's really amazing just to see so many people pouring out their support to those that know him and his family. So many people really loved him. It, it's really cool to see. Well, as I kind of mentioned, the, the success, it's the success story of Mitch. Everybody loves uh, I mean, he was a great personality and a great person, but then you look at those who, that don't know him, but they feel like they know him, it, it's because of what he's done. You know, he went from a walk-on from a small town in Arkansas to play for the Razorbacks, a dream of so many high school football players, you know, mm -hmm. that's what you dream of doing, and Mitch lived that dream, and then they didn't stop there, he got drafted by the New York Giants, he won a Super Bowl ring, I mean, from Carlisle to New York, how about that <laughs> That's right a, that's, a, that's a Amazing. change for sure. Uh, I, I'm sure. To a Super Bowl champ. Mm -hmm. Now, Wes, you know, you talk about, you know, the people just like him, his personality, because when we saw him on air, when he was covering Fearless Friday football, that was the same way Mitch was when you talked to him in person. It was exactly, I mean, if you liked what you saw on air, we're seeing some video of him from Fearless Friday covering some games at North Rock right there. It, it, that's exactly what Mitch was off camera, too. So many people ask me, what's Mitch really like? <laughs> I'm like, what you see is what you get. Yeah. He's yeah. no different on the air than he is off the air. Uh, man, he'd walk into the newsroom and the place would just light up. Uh -huh. you know, it could be a quiet, and that's when a lot of times he came in on Sundays and taped segments on the Razorback, yeah. or heck yeah, I think he did some cooking shows with Ben Creighton on the final score <laughs> on some Sundays when the Razorbacks were struggling. They didn't want to talk about the Razorbacks, so they talked about cooking. But, you know, on the weekends, there's hardly anybody in the newsroom, and he would walk in and the place would light up. And that's just, that's the way he was everywhere he went. People just would gravitate to Mitch and his personality because and I've said it several times. I think that's just the best way to describe him. He was, he was just larger than life and his personality and everything he did. Well, he said the newsroom would light up, but also the, if, wherever he would go, if you were asleep, you would wake up because yeah. Mitch would always make his presence known. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and I felt that way on Friday night. You know, we we had a, a bad luck run of Friday nights of getting some just. Mm, terrible weather i mean it would seem like it rained and lightning every friday night and and bitch would come on and it would just change the entire show you know we've got we've got some great great reporters that that work for us on fearless friday and uh, do, do those reports but Mitch was the guy people always wanted to ask about. You know, when, when I'm out on the street, they were like, hey, can you send Mitch here? I, I mean, I had requests. Mm -hmm. I had requests from, from coaches saying, when are you going to send Mitch to one of our games? That's, that's the impact he would make when he was there. He had so much fun at those games and changed those games in the reporting of the games that you had head coaches asking me to send Mitch to cover their game. Oh, wow. All right, uh, I'm sure you're going to be talking more about Mitch, of course, on your show coming up on The Buzz. Is that at 10 o'clock with Justin? Is that right? Yeah, Justin and I are on the zone from 10 to 1. Um, you know, it's still, it's, it's, you know, therapy is, that's part of it, you know, talking yeah. about yeah. Mitch. And that helps. I'm still just um, trying to process it all this morning, really. Uh, 
um, my phone just I blew up and sure. I wasn't sure what was going on and I got up and looked at it and that's that's the that's not the way you want to start the day. No. Well, we're going to actually go over to the buzz right now. Thank you, Wes, for joining Thanks, Wes. us. Uh, we're live at the buzz with David Basil. Good morning, David. I hate to be talking to you like this. Just really awful news this morning. How did you hear about this? Uh, Isabella, I received a call from the state police just confirming that uh, we'd had several calls uh, that he had passed away, I think sometime around 2 o'clock this morning or some, sometime early this morning. And we like, just like Wes, we were all shocked. And, you know, he's the kind of guy, uh, he's the kind of guy why I love playing football because he was so gregarious. And every team, every Razorback team has a couple of these personalities. And that's what Mitch was. I mean, uh, he was larger than life. He walked in. You knew he was in the room. He was loud. Um, always wanted to get better. One of the things I loved about uh, Mitch is that he, 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 everything he did when he came out of high school, he wanted to be a great Razorback football player. When he, came, when he left the Razorbacks, he wanted to be an NFL player, which he succeeded. And so he started calling me occasionally and said, hey, listen, I'd like to do some radio. I'd like to do some television. So he was a guy that was was always trying to get better, and uh, we've had him on the show, obviously the buzz quite a bit, and and he's like a cyclone when he when he comes in, and uh, and so that's the thing I, I love about him. He's that personality that you don't have many of in life, but you appreciate, and you don't know how he keeps at the pace he does, but uh, you appreciate, you have fun with it, you just love a guy like that. David, one of the things that Wes just said is that it helps to talk about it. Talk about everything that happened. Talk about him and his larger-than-life personality. And I think that's what everyone's doing this morning. Is that what you guys are, are talking about this morning? Well, you know, the, the, the thing that's so difficult, I think, from our perspective, my perspective, is the guy, you know, he's 32 years old. You know, it's just way, way too young to lose a guy like that. And, uh, you know, the, one of the nice things is that we, we've got Mitch on tape. You guys are running it. And you can't help but look at that and smile because uh, I got a chance to watch some of his, uh, some of his live shots. And you, you have to admit, there's nobody on the planet that does a Friday night high school football live shot like uh, Mitch did. And so that's one of the neat things, too, is that we've got footage, we've got... Matter of fact, we're going to see if we can go back and find some of the you know times when he was on with us because you know he would just he was so powerful he would just suck the rest of the air out of the room. So I do think it's good to talk about it, Isabella, and I do think you know um, uh, you know he lived life to his fullest. You know, yeah, you, you hate to, to lose a guy at that age, but uh, you know his time here, man, he he made every day worthwhile, and uh, we, we'll miss him. We didn't, you know, I didn't get to see him a whole lot, but anytime I was around him, it was always a lot of fun. Always a lot of fun. He was a hardworking guy. I mean, I, we see him sometimes. He would come in. His hands were all so dirty from the work he did, oil and dirt and grime and stuff. And he'd just come in and just turn it on and just be Mr. Personality. Yeah, he would. And the, the other thing about it, he was such a big dude. I don't know if, uh, you know, I know some of the Razorback fans knew, but when he went to the NFL Combine, he bench pressed 225 pounds 45 times, which I think is the top five in the history uh, of Combine. So the guy was a massive, strong dude. And I, yeah, I remember him talking. I would look at his fingers sometimes to see the dirt from, I guess he was working on the farm or whatever, but he didn't care. But yeah, just a really powerful guy who blocked for Darren McFadden and Felix Jones. I mean, you know, obviously one of the great uh, offenses we've seen in Razorback back history then he goes wins a Super Bowl ring so you know he accomplished a lot in a very short time all right David thank you so much for joining us we're praying for you and everyone that mm -hmm. knows him and his family of course this morning